everybody welcome back to overwatch contenders china the english broadcast brought to you by broadcast gg i'm john kick tripod horseman joined back on the desk with scrinobi is that what we're is that what it's called now is that what your desk thing's called is that okay anyways that's what it is uh we've got a really fun match coming up between moss seven club and lucky future scribe what's at stake in this match honestly this is this is a very very tight group and actually tight group is kind of almost underselling it considering <laughs> how one-sided the other group a uh, group a has been but group b it's it's honestly a toss-up here both teams right now are one and two they only really have one map differential and that's because of a tie actually so their map differential is actually the same but their map record is just slightly different this could be a big challenge for fourth place the winner of this is set up in such a good position you don't want to be one and three heading into like the last week of games you want to be able to at least have a little a uh, bit of control in your own fate you don't want to have to rely on someone else failing to do this but that's what the big stakes are here so i want to talk a little bit about my seven club here at kenobi and i, I want to really know who are the key players on this team that we need to be looking out for going into this match well my seven club kind of has this uh this mantra of having some you know weird compositions that they bring out they sometimes bring out you know arisa hog and solo like roadhog tank some things that we're not used to really seeing um you know vanessa will sometimes you know switch on to tracer and switch on back onto arisha then switch to fair like they just are completely flexible in whatever they want to play um the issue is, unfortunately for them, sometimes it comes back to bite them, as sometimes they're just like, let's just play whatever, you know, let's mystery heroes it a little bit. Um, but, uh, you know, speaking of DPS a little bit more, they're a little bit more mainstays, you know, Mask, very competent, Widow and Jinmu, also very competent, Genji, and as we know, KT, in China, Widow and Genji, that's kind of your bread and butter that you fall back on, so you definitely need to have those good players on those heroes. What about on the lucky future side? Who are the big uh, t uh, players we need to uh, be watching out for in this match? Yeah, the number one player obviously is Yarg. Uh, with on the projectile, I think the really strong barrier player, and he's going to be the main character uh, or the main hero you want to mainly look at. He's going to be the main guy who's going to be holding the team together. Uh, alternative DPS says we could either sleep Sleepwalker or Wenli, uh, both uh, playing in. I, these characters, I think uh, these guys are both slow warmer so it's kind of like we're going to wait to see a few maps before they really come online but the big thing i want to highlight obviously is so what tn tank line they've looked so good in the recent weeks and i want to see them push their advantage more to allow their dps players to flourish all right i love it so keys to victory here if moss seven club is walking away with the victory here today what what are they going to need to exploit in lucky future kenobi uh to walk away today I think one of the biggest things for Moss 7 Club is they need to not get in their own heads, right? They need to, you know, play what they're comfortable with instead of, you know, last week when they were playing, they played a lot of wonky comps that kind of just felt like they were just thrown together, like with like paper, like paper mache and like glue and like sticky. It just doesn't <laughs> look that great. Um, the week before my, oh my though, cosplay, by the way. Yeah, yes. yeah the, the week beforehand, it looked like they had like plans behind their compositions, you know, triple DPS and things like that. So I, I would like to see Moss 7 Club, you know, stick to their guns and not let themselves be dictated by what Lucky Future is going to play. If you're going to be playing meta, make sure that you're very comfortable on those meta heroes. And if you're going to be playing those wonky comps, make sure there's some rhyme or reason behind them. Fair enough. On the other side, Lucky Future Scribe coming in on this one. You've got, you know, you're going to get the curveball from Moss 7 Club. You, it, it's got to be a team that's difficult to prepare for. Given that, what are their keys to victory here? How do they walk away with one today? Yeah, stability is going to come from the tank line here. That's always how Overwatch kind of works. You really have your tank line staying the metronome uh, for the game. It's also spacing wise, like, you know, whether or not uh, frontline pressure is going to be existing or how well you can protect your backline. I want Tien and Soa to be the real heralds of this. I want them to really strike first and strike hard. I want them to be the leaders here, even though let's say Yard, Sleepwalker, or Wanley, it could be, you know, the, the DPS the carries here. I want the tank lines to be more of the leaders here. I want them to pressure more, really pressure the uh the points of Moss 7 which are weak here right they don't really have a standard team composition start breaking down their confidence a little more and that's how we're gonna win all right scribe you get to redeem yourself here you get to your zero and one in your predictions <laughs> and uh you're losing really bad to kenobi <laughs> and this is a big deal this is really important to the uh overall reputation of our analyst desk so need you to redeem yourself here 
Who's walking away with the W? What's the score? You know what? I I think that future group was good, but they just weren't lucky enough. So lucky future <laughs> as both of those in the score. <laughs> lucky future. <laughs> lucky future as is. I think three one again. You know, I'm not scared of being wrong. I'm just scared of being too uh, vanilla. Fair enough. So so are you? Who are you siding with? I missed it. Lucky future three one. Lucky future three one. All about the future today. I get it. Fair enough. Kenobi, who are you taking? Uh, I think it's going to be uh, Moss 7 Club. I think they're going to be taking this in the 3-1. I think Lucky Future definitely could sneak uh, one of the maps away from them. But I think Moss 7 Club today, they brought the, uh, not the mystery hero comp, they brought the actual comp. No paper mache, just high quality cardboard coming out from Moss 7 Club today. All right, fair enough. Well, we're going to go to a really quick break. I promise it's going to be so fast. You don't even know it's going to be a break. You're going to wonder why I'm even at telling you about it. We're going to go to a quick break, and then we're going to get to map one on Oasis right after this. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, Broadcast UG's China Contenders coverage. And we should be getting straight into the game. I am Josh One Monks Mini Fountain, joined by my friend Ryan Central. And we are here on Oasis between Lucky Future and Moss 7 Club. Anything could happen here. Anything could happen here, Ryan. We're straight into it already, actually. Both the teams are fighting on University. Trying to sort of take the first win. Lucky Future are better on the control maps if we're looking at percentages of wins. Moss 7 have a much stronger end game with the pure pillar of the two CP maps. But we're here straight on University, both teams running uh, fairly similar competitions, but a few key differences. Yeah, there's a, an Anna involved in the back line as well. Seven o'clock, actually getting in good position. Beautiful flashbang right into the back of the Mercy as well. Deleting that target, it's going to be high priority. While Lee coming through on the low ground on that fire, though, does get some devastating damage. But like was mentioned on the desk, the tanks need to be the tip of the spear for Lucky Future. And looks like Xian's doing just that as he's starting to push forward, gets into Vanessa a little bit. They're trying to just pressure that down. Nanaboo's actually onto the Debra at the moment. She's on low hit points, so has to play defensively. She's going to back away, take it careful from now. It just has to be so cautious. 58 hit points. Look at that health back. No, it's just going to reset by the looks things as the point does flip back to lucky future well they take the point first time around and they are building towards some ultimates we can see that tian is well on his way to get the graviton has a lot of momentum in his favor seeing as he has a lot of earth um sorry a charge and right now they're looking in a good position lucky future they have a lot of ultimates ready they have both the spot ultimates, so they have a lot of uh, answers to what must seven want to do so we're going to bring out the high noon very early in this fight yeah, High Noon comes out, while he just dunks a barrage on his head and just puts an end to that nonsense. Bomb comes through, doesn't find anything, so what? Just taking a few poisonous darts there from the Anna. It's so good to see her back, but she's having a bit of a tough time in this map as Lucky Future again just pressuring forward again. So what? Just this corner of this Zarya. Hammer comes down, comes through, clears that Zarya up and sweeps out this low ground position. Lucky Future in such a good place that they have lost the McCree, but they're just holding the plane standard. This is kind of what we expected out of these guys. Yep, speaking of McCree, Mask using High Noon very early in that fight got no use because the barrage from Wildly shut it down. It's now switched over to Hanzo, he's already 41% on having his ultimate ready. So, might be able to have a bit of a synergy going on with Mask and Jinmu, but Gary has the Transcendence to shut that down fairly easily. But actually, has just used it right now. Yep, Transcendence comes through, just buying a little bit of time. There goes the Deadeye, Graviton Surge is on the point as well. Deadeye looks like got intercepted there by the D, but she just scoops up all that damage. But Wanli, uncontested in the skies, coming in up and over, laying in these rockets, trying to get rid of a couple of targets. There goes the Graviton Surge, Zarya and Far uh, damage combining in there, splashing down, killing targets. What's well, 7 Club, definitely on the back foot and having a really tough time here. Cleans it up, and there we go, 80% to 22, there's one shot in. How do more 7 Club come back into this one? Not with ultimates because they seem to use a good amount of them there so far. Mask is going to have a dragon fairly soon, but Lucky Future did dedicate a lot of ultimates to that fight. That was the big break. That was the opportunity the Moss 7 had, but Lucky Future had the resources they were just sat on, ready to sort of go in. But the dragon is ready. The dragon is sated. It's going to go across the point as Yag's going to oh. basically knock Mask away from the point. 
Oh. And the dragon is sated. It's been fed a Zenyata by the looks of things. Deadeye comes back, doesn't actually get the diva there, just gets consumed once again. Hanzo managing to actually dodge the shot there. Gets the counter as well. Mart coming up big. He is smoking at the moment as he just takes down Yard. Manages to retake the point and they flip it 23%, but there is so many threats coming in for Lucky Future. There's no margin of error now. They can't lose this point, but they do have a very stacked lineup. What I mean by that is the triple tanks, of course. Moss 7 known for running uh, very unorthodox strategies, and this is certainly one of them. Gudan on the Ana. It's nice to see. I love seeing Ana, and it works well with his strategy. Uh, Zishin is going to be much more aggressive here, actually pushing ahead as Gudan gets to take onto him with the. Uh, the grenade, so one Lee is just gonna chunk in some damage. He's got very aggressive here, maybe not necessarily considering, but they both lose a pick on the sides, so and LF are actually yeah. gonna go in here. They want to make a fight of this, and Hanzo has the mana boost. The damage coming out of this lad is going to be enormous. They have to be so careful. They're having a tough time killing him as well, because he has that extra durability. Transcendence comes in on the point, and a Graviton Surge actually gets landed as well. Just doesn't turn into much of anything. The fight is kind of stalled out at the moment. Wanley gets the barrier. Beautiful little bit of synergy there as Wanley just dunks the barrier down onto the target. Does get finished off by the end of the fight, but they've managed to flip the point at the moment. 99%. Overtime Wick is burning down. Almost gets completed at the moment. They're on the back foot at the moment. Moss 7 Club, they have to claw their way back into this for tanks. The tip of the spear, like Sprive said, is just doing work here. So what coming up big, holding the choke point, continuing to put that pressure out. Graphon Surge, we should put an end to this one. And my oh but it's frozen. There we go. They have managed to do it. I've done wick. There we go. Complete. And lucky so feature. Go one nil up. That push, um, that final push that we did see coming out of Lucky Future there came from the biggest yet most hilarious mistake actually. Uh, from Moss 7, so they wanted to use the Grav Dragon combination. Sorry, he used it, pretty much got everybody, but Mask was 97% on having his dragon, oh, no. so he started to try and shoot in the ferret in the air just to get a little bit of ult charge. Couldn't do it, and they missed their window of opportunity of winning that fight because they didn't have dragon for that push, so really good example of maybe where the uh, communication is just completely shut down there, even for a split second, and it just gave Lucky Future their lucky break to take that map. It is very close. It does play out very differently on City Centre. But Moss 7 Club running a very interesting strategy with a way to make a Brigitte, but with uh, more of a dive lineup. No mercy, though. Uh, it's just for the speed boost, actually, to get them closer to the point. So, Lucky Future no bringing out the ever favoured Pharaoh Widow. Their strategy going forward as they do is take the centre here. Mask with a very nice early kill onto y uh, Yarg as well. That's going to just put him on the back foot. Rez does. Pick him back up, of course, but that safety net is now removed for this team. So, Moss 7 Club in good position at the moment. Do have control of the center. Yarg actually out in the open here. Has to be careful. Does manage to get a rocket or two onto Mask in Retaliation. Does get to the safety of sort of the cover as well from this Windmaker. Tank still jockeying for position. This is city center, of course. So, settle in. The fight normally takes a little bit of time as the Farah actually gets good position onto Mask. It's a lot of damage done, but the support are there just to pick him up. Moss 7 Club cruising have actually taken the point for themselves and will start picking up here. So this is really interesting based on what Mask has to do in this game. He has to zone out both the Widowmaker Wanli and Yarg on the Farah, just as a Widowmaker, because there's no real support coming in from Jinmu, who is there to basically shut down any form of dive that comes in from So What and here on the future. So it's a bit of a mixed match composition from Moss 7, but it seems to be working. They have control of this point, and they're now starting to build up their ever important ultimates, most certainly the support ones, as Wanli is looking for a flank. But again, Mask needs to shut this down. We need to get control of this sniper. One Lee gets the DMX. Yan actually gets onto Gudan as well. He's going to be removed. Yan's going to delete the Diva as well. And now momentum definitely is sweeping towards Lucky Future's favor. Looks like the Rez did manage to come through. So Vanessa is back in the fight, back into that Diva mech. But Yarg just seems to have free range just to pressure Mask. He hasn't managed to convert it into a kill yet, but he has managed to put sort of the pedal to the metal. But not before the tanks can sweep in. Yarg gets a bit too close to the ground, gets punished for it. 52% ticking up at the moment. They are halfway there. It's going to clean up the rest of this fight. It's just an irritating Winston. Even goes for the primal rage. He wants it. He's hungry for it. So what just says so what? And goes into this backline, pressuring Mask out like crazy. But can they turn this into any opportunities? Can they turn this into any kills? It doesn't look like it so far. It's just been so difficult to ship more seven off this point. They have so much support, so much healing, they're not being peeled away. And so many ultimates to get dedicated to this from Lucky Future, and the point's still ticking up in Moss 7's favor, and it looks like they're actually going to win out this fight. 
really interesting to watch how the whole of Moss 7 seems to collapse on itself every time they're under a good amount of pressure because of that Brigitte. So when So What's trying to kill Master Winston going after the ever-favored Widowmaker, Moss 7 just back out a little bit, sit with the Brigitte, and Mask will just sit with his team as a Widowmaker to just try and shell out some damage. So this is really well played from Moss 7, who now have this, uh, this composition that matches the strategy that they want to play. And that, so far, is not what we've seen from Moss 7, really. And so, Brawl begins on the point. Brigitte actually coming out for Lucky Future now. Yogg's ditching the Fara. d bomb comes up and over. Looks like it might get the Widowmaker. It doesn't quite get it, but does get rid of the D uh, the Brigitte, sorry, crucially, as Mars gets the better of one lead in that Widowmaker duel as well. But it is City Center, of course. There is a big Brawl in the middle of the City Center. It's like they've just won a tournament in football or something similar at the moment. There we go, Mars 7, though. Continuing to put that pressure on, continuing just to clean up. They are so brawly, so tough in these close ranges, and they just continue to outfight and out... Brawl, they just dragged, they felt like Lucky Future down to their level, scrapped with them, and cleaned them up. They ran their strategy, they dedicated to it. We certainly looked at it as they were coming out of the doors, being like, hmm, I'm not sure, like, this is a strategy that could work for sure. But the issue is, can Moss 7, as they've struggled with throughout this whole sort of stage in season two of Contenders, they've just not really been able to implement the strategies that they actually want to try and run. So they run the comps and they go, this could work, but they're not really sure the the ifs and buts. You know, they're not uh, crossing their T's or dotting their I's as such. So now we're starting to see a little bit more coordination coming out of them. But now they're playing a very different strategy again. Genji McCree, very different to Lucky Future that's running Tracer Farah. So again, very different lineups. Moss 7 just need to discipline themselves with these strategies that they're running. Lucky Future just need to burn as bright as they did on University. So, Yard looking for a way in at the moment. He's just hunting for an angle while Wanli's getting set up, getting a bit of spam in. He knows that the McCree is out there, so he has to be careful. He's sticking up high in the air at the moment as fighting does begin on the point. It's gonna... Still looking for position. You can see Jinmu actually staying relatively far back. They're playing this very cautiously. Moss 7 just taking the time, waiting for the point to activate perhaps before they look for an engagement. There we go. Winston just hopping forward, not even that far. Does have the Discord orb on him. He has to back away. Yag is now going for the kill though, but it looks things, but not before. Moss 7 clubs just go big on the opposite side. Both supports now down as Mask and Jinmu get into that back line, start killing people. No problem, Marino, as Jinmu continues to just look for these targets. But honestly, they've managed to do it. They just swept them up. So Moss 7 clubs doing a good job there, just peeling for Yusin, who had a lot of pressure on him, managed to keep him alive, and then, yeah, just kill the enemy support. Pressure is the sort of key word there. Mask is doing such a good job of just keeping control of this fight. Gets a good amount of kills. Takes, it's taken out the fight fairly early on, but is resurrected from uh, their mercy on Moss 7. So, now looking future, changing their strategy yes, it's, yeah, again. Fairly similar to what Moss 7 ran on control center. Oh. But they are going to be zoned out. Gary goes down from a well-placed diva bomb from Vanessa. So this is just going to stall him out a little bit more. And now Moss 7 seems to be in the driving seat of Oasis and in full control. Yeah, they are playing close to the choke as well. Jinmu just steadily building up that Dragon Blade, like a good measure of how you can keep track of how teams are doing this, sort of how the ultimates are measuring up against each other. And Moss 7's DPS are well ahead of where Lucky Future is. Yaga actually swipping, swipping, switching to that Brigida. It's going to be crucial for him to try and control this Genji somewhat. But Jinmu's been playing this really well. He's just been sort of staying, uh, keeping his distance, spamming away with those shurikens, building up and then going for the kills when he has the opportunity. He does take a Sky Grenade there, has pulled out the blade actually somewhere out there. I think he's looking for the fire, but can't quite find it. It's just getting crowd controlled and pushed out. Transcendence even being committed there just to keep his team alive. Dado comes through, doesn't quite get the far as he just managed to squeak around the corner just to keep ourselves alive. So, dual offensive ultimates coming out of Moss 7 Club, but not for really much value at the moment, as now the Winston jumping in on the back line. So what's going to start pressuring up this McCree? He needs to make sure he's not getting himself cornered. Mark doing a really good job, actually, of not getting pushed there into that corner, but does get knocked into Gary there. Oh, Barrage straight to the deflect, though. Jinmu just picks him up and cleans him up. He's trying to get back into the fight now, trying to keep his team's hopes alive here. Moss uh, 7 Club doing so well here on the point. Can they keep the sheets clean here on Gardens is the big question. Now as uh, Yixian just continues to pressure around with this Winston, these tanks from Moss 7 Club having free reign now to just keep Lucky Future pinned into this corner. You can see he's already built up 30% of another ultimate. He's hitting so many people with that Tesla cap. If Jimmy's just been able to zone out completely, this is going so well for Moss 7. Lucky Future haven't got quite the punch to just finish off fights quickly. Wanley's in on the Dimfits, goes down. Dragon Blade is ready for Jimmy. You'd expect that he pull it out now, but actually does bait out Gary's Transcendence. 
So this is a perfect situation for a Genji to be in. It's just going to wait it out. But the rest of the supports are completely zoned out. This is where Yishin's going to jump onto the back line. All of the supports are peeling for one another. There's the blade from Jinmu. It's enough to sort of clear out the point. But again, Lucky Future aren't giving this up very easily. Yeah, they are clinging on. You would expect more kills to come out of that. Doofus has made his way back. The Desperation Doofus came out once. He's come back with a vengeance as well as he takes down Gudan. He is removed from the fight. Mask looks for the bomb, finds it, sticks the Doofus. He just limply falls down onto the point. Beautiful kill there coming out of Mask. And there we go. Moss 7 Club managed to clean this up here on Oasis. It was just as crazy as perhaps we were expecting as well. Good Lord. I don't think the same thing was ever played twice there by Moss 7 Club. That was nuts. They sort of had key moments on University. I think Lucky Future were just very much in control of the strategies that they wanted to play there. But I'm really impressed at how Moss 7 managed to compose themselves for City Center. And especially Gardens as well. The positioning from Mascus and McCree just sort of sat really far back on the high ground. Suggests that they know that Lucky Future wants to dive them. They almost want to bait the tanks into them because they really know that sort of Yag and Wan Lee can't really follow them, especially if they're running a Brigitte too, that the Brigitte can't exactly dive with the tanks. And Farah too. Farah is better at throwing out distance from much further distance, so she can't really just dive in like a Genji or a Tracer or a Doomfist can. So really, it's kind of like they're zoning out the tanks a little bit, and Moss 7 are almost baiting Lucky Future. And because of that, there were just less consistent kills coming out of Lucky Future, and their spark did sort of burn out a little bit. Okay, then, so, 1-0 up to Moss 7 Club. This battle for fourth place, to, just to stay in contenders, avoid that hazard of not making it to playoffs or dipping it into trials. Uh, crucial fight here, beginning. We're going to take a brief break while we get the next map set up for you guys. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in a few minutes' time. I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully, you are too. If 17 floors, I can when it rains I can feel those drops in my window pain Let's me know that I'm still here But when the sun comes out, I will go outside When it breaks through clouds, I will give a smile Let's me know that I'm still here Sometimes I want to run away, run away To find good times again
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Contenders China with Broadcast.gg. This is the English coverage. I am Josh, one of Max Many Pemberton, and I'm joined by my good friend Ryan Central. Say hello, Ryan. Hello, hello, hello. We're at Kings Row for this next game. Uh, Moss Seven have gone one nil up. A bit of a surprise, at least, but I think Lucky Futures、uh, win rate on Kings Row is pretty good considering the position that they're in. So this is a perfect opportunity for Lucky Futures to come back into this game. 
But for Moss 7, it's a great sort of way to cement themselves in winning this match if they can go 2-0 up. Considering that they're quite good on 2CP, but the pure payload maps is where they really strive. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a tough thing as well, because this is, and like I, this cannot be stated enough, this is the fight for fourth place, basically. Like, between these two teams, they are currently straddling that fifth, fourth place in the group, right? The six teams in the group, the bottom two aren't going to make it to playoffs. And you say so you need to get that fourth place, and both of these teams pretty even on map score, like it was pointed out in the desk. They are very, very even. So going ahead in this series is going to be a big deal. Clean sheets is going to be even better. Getting that 4-0 sort of scoreline is going to be a very big deal as well. The gates are about to open. What are we seeing here on defense, Ryan? Must have a run in dive tanks again, no eraser, which is quite interesting. But the ever favored Widowmaker, as I keep pointing out, is she's pretty much everywhere. And Junkrat on the defense seems to be a pretty solid position. Lucky Future running an eraser on the attack, so this might be a great way to burn down what Must Seven is trying to do, which isn't quite the situation that you see. Actually, they're running uh, the Overwatch League sort of composition with a Roadhog and only one support. Yes, the, the Philly Fusion special by the looks of things. Mono support, mono mercy coming out. Ball and chain combos as well. The Orisa pulls, uh, throws out the halt, pulls somebody in, and the Roadhog just hooks him and then cooks him, basically. Winston having a bit of a tough time there on point as well. But Ka oh, Gary's, he's disarmed the trap. He's managed to find it. And beautiful kill actually coming out of Jimmu. That's a lot of ultimate charge in his back pocket, of course. That Riptide is going to be essential for him to try and break the push coming forward here. So he's going to look for that angle again, just try and get that little bit more damage. He has the Riptide available to him. Just sets himself up in the reception desk. Hello, sir. Can I take your booking, please. Oh, can I check you out? He's gonna check anybody out. No, he's not. He's just still stalling. He's running around as you found by the roadhog. Kill someone <laughs> with it. Man, find something. It just gets nothing. Oh my lord, all that build up is just no results at the end of the day. Oh dearie, dearie me. No, doesn't matter too much though. Wally managing to find one actually on the retaliation kill. So lucky future already with two thirds taken here on the point. Comical, yeah, very much an impactful thing that's going to affect how Lucky Future take this point. That Riptide not getting any form of picks is a big loss, and that's why Lucky Future are well on their way of taking this objective. It's such a, a big thing, especially when you run in triple tanks like Lucky Future are with the Orisa, Diva, and the Roadhog, that it is easy ult charge for a Junkrat to get that Riptide. So when you get zero kills, they refuse to kill Gary on the Roadhog, even though he recently used the uh, Breaver. It says a lot, really, that Moss7 are now switching stuff up. They're probably not really going to feel comfortable running the same strategy that Lucky Future are in Miracom. So it's a bit awkward for them to try and deal with it. Lucky Future showed exactly why the Overwatch League teams are playing this composition so often in this tier. Yeah, the, the whole Hog and Bongo combo doing so much damage there. The supercharge is just making that shrapnel all the more dangerous. And this is a team comp that is very heavily based on momentum. And Lucky Future absolutely taking control of this one. They've clearly been watching the Overwatch League, clearly watching Philadelphia Fusion running this sort of strategy as they just want to press as hard as they can. Mask managing to buy a little bit of space for his team at the very least, but Wanley's going to have something to say about that. A little bit of a bipolar player is Wanley, but he has been performing pretty well overall here in Contenders. Managed to get the pullback. Oh, it sets him up for the headshot. At Absolutely beautiful here as they start to close out in the second. Now they're starting to look like the stronger team. It's asking a lot of questions to Moss7 who right now look like they don't really have the answer to the strategy as this payload is near on being uncontested this whole way. But now we're starting to see Moss7 pushing in aggressively with a Valkyrie. But still the picks are coming through with Lucky Future as the Dragon Strike is the thing that clears up the path. Five minutes on the clock yet to push on through. Moss7 looking complete disarray. So during sort of the death segment, you know, one of the things that again was highlighted was Lucky Future's tank plays. And, you know, one of the best ways to play tanks seems to be just to run three of them and throw them at the enemy team. Uh, who knew that Gary had such a good Roadhog in his back pocket? It seems to be becoming a thing for Zenyatis to sort of flex onto this hero and actually start showing up. Lucky Future rampaging forward, doing such a good job of controlling Jinmu as well. He's just been sort of non-existent in this game. Since the Junkrat changed, no, like, it would have been a good opportunity to swing the fight, but now when Lee has that emphasize, is looking to see where the Mercy is. The Mercy's not going to be baited out just as easy, so has to find more picks to look for. As big ultimates are coming out from Moss 7, this is where they want to be trying to take this fight back. He's got himself two at the very least with that Dragon Blade. Just manages to get the DPS combo on the go there. The sort of damage boost even going on to him. Jimmy, it looks like he was going back to spawn there. He might actually be swapping off or is he going to be staying on that Genji? I think he is just coming back with it. Looks like they do want to just stay on it. They have a Dragon Strike as well. Just to sort of contest up some of these tight little pathways. But Lucky Future coming in with a, a couple of powerful ultimates of their own. And Moss 7 actually bringing out the May, which could be really effective against this strategy. I'm really curious to know what works against the strategy and composition that Lucky Future are running. And 
really, they don't have a lot of big ultimates to win fights like a Dragon Blade. They have the self-destruct, but that's exactly what they're going to try and use now to get a pick, does it? Not quite, and the Dragon Strike's just enough to zone out Future for a little bit longer, but there's still a lot of time oh, to waste. Maywall just sort of even covered the Dragon Strike coming out. Yarg gets himself one. Masters gets finished off by the, the Dragons there. They do find themselves being sated as Wanli actually manages to deny the res. No, the res goes through, but it still goes down. Feng Mian just gets taken down. Yarg in such a good position here on this high ground. He's uncontested as well, just shooting down. Can he finish up the baby D? But yes, he can. He finds the arrow, finds another one. Yarg has gone huge here with a triple, as now they are well set to push themselves forward. They're going to go all the way to spawn. Beautiful kill there onto the Zen Yarda. He has 86% ultimate chance. There's not a transcend that's going to come out to help stall this one as well. They need to get something, anything here on the point. Yishin does have that uh, shadow available to him. Looks like the maze managed to make it back to stall. Will begin here. Will they be able to get anything with it? Looks like Gary's going to be stunned, frozen up, shut down. But there's another dragon coming up from Yogi. He's done so much damage, building these up so fast. It's going so well at the moment for Lucky Future. And they're just completely tearing through, but Boss 7 out giving this up just as easily. Transcendence and the Doom Fist actually from Shin is coming out. That's the main tank going to stall it as uh, the, the Fist himself is going to pull in. Actually, this may up might be enough to zone out completely as it's a big amount of focus on the Jinmu. <laughs> that actually might have been able to turn the fight, and now Lucky Future have peated out a little bit and have to back off. Yeah, I mean, these desperation stalls at the end of third, like the, the Blizzard ult is really powerful. Go figure, Blizzard just, you know, making themselves look good, basically, with a, a nice space clear and ultimate. But that Doomfist swap is, is certainly a, an interesting one. It's a bit of a spicy one. Looks they like they, they have, at least. Yeah, they, they have put it away, so they have a main tank at the very least, especially against this double sniper comp. You don't want to be without some form of barrier, without some form of protection. Looks like Debrault's going in up and over, looking to get a couple of kills there. May without a nice block as well, as Whole Hog does come out onto the point, trying to clear it up as best as possible. Yaga again finds that kill though. Jinmu deleted the maid. No longer going to be able to stall. There goes the ball and chain combo. Gets the Orisa out in the open. Gets some vulnerable. Vanessa, oh no, the Hanzo clings to the oh. ledge. He manages to claw his way back up. He's still involved in this fight. It looks like they will push this one to completion. Moss have done a really good job to be able to stall it, but they can't do it any longer. They had five minutes left on this third point. They seem to relishing those chaotic fights, but ultimately Yag was the difference. Getting us all in point picks and the synergy coming out, you know, pulling an enemy into the air with the Arisa Holt, having them headshot or hooked, seems to be working pretty well in Lucky Future's favor. They have less than two minutes on the clock over time, but now it's a big ask for Moss 7 to even sort of finish this. As it looks like, Lucky Future are going to be running the similar sort of strategy, albeit with a Junkrat on defense. Yeah, it's got like these mono support comps have been popping up. They are a little bit vulnerable. I mean, like the prevalence of Genji as well in China, like the the Dragon Blade being used to sort of find this Mercy and kill her as aggressively as possible is actually one of the ways you can try, you know, kind of try and surgically scalpel out that solo healer. So it is something that we've seen sort of Overwatch League teams try and do is use these Genjis to fish out and kill those mono support. So we'll see how that goes for them uh, as they do roll out with that triple support. Gary had a pretty good round overall, I'd say as well, on that Roadhog. Definitely was getting results, linking up nicely with So What. It's good to see that team synergy coming forward because Lucky Future, overall, I'd say they're, they're a team on the rise, right? They, you know, they had a bit of a shaky start, but they've just been getting better and better throughout this, this season. They've even had like really close games like the LGD one, especially in the second week was uh, the main precipice LGD is now um, at the top of their group. So that says a lot about Lucky Future that have just at the sort of missed out just in the last match or maybe lost concentration halfway through or had swaps that haven't really warmed up well, especially in the Widowmaker dual battle area. But now they're looking consistent in this game mode at least. They know the strategies that they want to run, look comfortable doing it, but it is just about the sort of final execution, that, uh, that finishing put in the uh, cherry on the cake, as you will. Number seven need to try and replicate similar results, albeit with a very different composition. They're just running your de facto dive with Hanzo. It might not bode well into the strategy that Lucky Future are running themselves, though. It is the Super Shimada brothers gracing us with their presence. Genji going in, just trying to fish for a little bit of ultimate charge as they start taking position. A juicy grenade there landing, but something they've got to keep track of. They cannot let too many of these grenades land. If one lead does build up that ultimate nice and quickly, it's going to cause a number of problems. But Mask actually doing a good job there, finding good angles. Again, this Dragon Strike, these ultimates building super quickly. It's going to be such a pivotal deal. 80% so far, and he's looking for even more. Gary actually in a lot of trouble as well, almost gets picked off there. You can see that they're stuck in the hotel here, and they're going to have a Dragon Strike to sort of push in. To. This is really good for Moss 7 Club as they do manage to get the kills on the back of it. Mars just cleaning up, takes up the point, no problem. And that's a very clean take from Moss 7. 
it was almost a lucky feature rotated themselves between the rock and hard place so that's one of the main sort of positives for dive really in this sense against this strategy which i guess a lot of people are still trying to work out it's almost gone full circle really the dive could properly envelop around this composition if they can flank and get behind the eraser she can't block damage from different directions and as you said, zoning out Hoyokian on the Mercy is going to be their win condition if they can stop all forms of healing coming in altogether. Wanli switches from Junkrat to Farah to add a little bit more aerial threat because Jimbu's just trying to poke ahead, make sure that they can't take as much ground as they want. Dragonblade coming out here. Valkyrie trying to counter those, so they're going to keep that alive. And a lot of spam damage coming out. Gary even bringing up the whole hog just to zone that Genji away. So really good sort of peeling there for the sports. But they still need to deal with the threat that is Mask. He's just been doing so well so far on this hand. So continues to find results. So good res there coming out. Just gets covered there by Xi'an. So they're still keeping themselves in this fight. It's been scrappy so far, but Moss 7 Club just re-rallying, coming back. Jimmy actually swapping to the Doom Fist off the Genji as well. They have a Dragon Strike to finish this point off for themselves. It's just the uh, the far left. One is going to get scooped up, and now they're going to get something good. Here at the end of third, Dragon Strike comes through, oh, so they're gonna look to push him out. And yeah, they're looking really good here at the end of third. Like, they know exactly what they're doing, and I guess one of the main things about the strategy you're looking for chat are also running is that they're very slow. So, if you can sort of drown them out in areas that they might be trying to hide to take ground, it's quite easy for Mass to push on through and to get those picks, and he's completely tearing through Lucky Future. And they may even be able to actually got this point near enough have a yeah. good potential to have like more time the lucky future had on their attack but they're not giving this up so easily when Leon the is able to shell out a lot of damage and stalling out this point with the bodies that they have it's a big hook onto mask but he's there and he's almost got another dragon strike ready point finally goes through five minutes 20 on the clock they might be able to do this even faster than the lucky future yeah, Mask has just been a non-stop force of nature here from Moss 7 Club he has been destroying people on this hero. His team's doing a really good job as well, just making sure that he's sort of uncontested on this hand, so they are screening for him appropriately, giving him the space he needs on this hero to manage to find the damage. Like Jinmu managing to get a couple of good punches in there as well. Dragon Strike comes through those. Mars just wants to throw this one out. He's been building them so fast. I mean, why the heck not? D-Bomb does go in up and over though. Will delete him. Will remove him from this fight. And now the whole hog coming out as well. Lucky to just throw in as many things as they can against the wall. They still have a Valkyrie in the back pocket if they want to throw that one in too, but it looks like Moss 7 Club know the riding on the wall. They know this fight is over. They've got a back away they have four minutes 30 to complete out point number three they're looking and feeling probably pretty comfortable right now then again lucky future five minutes on their clock and they managed to complete the point in one minute 38 so a lot of time does get shed on this third point the must seven need to be kind of cerebral with how they want to play this they could be very aggressive trying to win out quickly i'll be more patient waiting ultimates but jimmy's gonna go ahead and do this takes care of gary and brings out the meteor straight to just completely clear up everything that's on the payload so many ultimates used as this train isn't quite stopping, and Moss 7 are well on their way to sort of push this through in a very, very respectable time. Look at Lucky Future run! They're just scared! They're like, please, just take get us into, into spawn! Get us to safety! Get us away from these madmen who are just destroying them on the front lines! It's absolutely crazy! It's unchecked aggression coming out of Moss 7 as well. Dragon coming out from Yav. Maybe that can clear up a little bit of space. Does manage to sneak it past the defense matrix there, so they will manage to clear the point for a moment or two as the battle of the Hanzos does continue to go on. Gu Dan actually dropping down there to that Dragon Strike, but not before Moss 7 continue to find these kills. Mask unmasking the Diva, basically, just de Mexer on the point. They've cleared enough space for them. Just keep pushing forward. You see the Winston there. He Shin just going in, pushing people off the point non-stop. Doofus lands, tries to take people out. We do see a couple of swaps coming in here. We do see the Moira rejoining the point. That extra healing, extra durability is going to be such a huge factor here, as it's going to be so much harder to peel people off the point. I do love this swap. Musk has another dragon. He's going to try and put this one in. Let's see if this one's good enough to clean the point. Can they actually stay on it? Will they do the letter on number of magic? No, they do stay put. Transcendence comes out. The fight's going even longer, Ryan. It's, it's taken so long for Moss 7 to claw and fight for this point as more had the actual Diva ultimate there to sort of refresh and take it, but the Meteor Strike's going to shut down Tim before he can get back into the payload. Now there's a May on the point walling and ice blocking herself into freedom, but the Discord Orb is on her. She's been taken out completely. There is another Diva bomb ready for Vanessa to try and clear up everything, but Lucky Future just constantly oh. pushing onto this point. They can't do it no longer. That was one of the most crazy fights we've seen, and one thing we know for sure is that Moss 7 managed to actually finish that point a lot quicker than what we saw coming out of Lucky Future. That was a very interesting turnaround. 
yeah, that was that was a battle, uh, to say the least. And like two minutes forty still left on the clock is, I think, a testament to how good Moss Seven Club were on the rest of that map, right? That's going to leave a mark in sort of the back of your head that they managed to sprint it through that quickly. And despite all that desperation stalling, all that hard fighting, like, you can imagine what the comms are like. Like Overwatch comms at the best of times are kind of crazy. So in a fight like that, that's going to be exhausting. Now fighting for like two minutes straight, it felt like we were almost talking for two minutes straight, just trying to keep up with it. It's going to be exhausting for these guys. And now you realize as well they're still doing better than you you're on the back foot they've got to pull out something special here right one trend that i've seen certainly from chinese games is um they tend to like be able to finish out maps with overtime you never really see them get installed on a second or third point most games you see the score going up to sort of like 5-4 for example so this is another example of that that's not to say that most seven have this easy they only have uh, about a minute more than what lucky future have but then again one thing to certainly add about the aggression and the attack from Moss 7 is that Lucky Future did sort of, you know, fold into a very difficult area, made things much harder for themselves. So they might have an idea of the strategies that are running of Watch League, sure, but not really sure why and how and how to really go about this. But they're going to run the exact same thing on attack as they did before. But Moss on 7 defense. change up their lineup completely differently. They're aware of what this is going to happen here. Yeah, this defense, Moss 7 coming at it with a Devil May Care attitude, basically. They brought out the Ice Queen for this first point hold. It used to be, like, ages and ages and ages ago, it used to be played quite regularly. And with this tank comp, you could try and split a couple of people off, but it's just not working at the moment. Lucky Future's double snipers can basically position for free. Widowmaker's just taking position on Mondata's uh, statue at the moment, I do believe. She set herself up on top of the head of the man that she killed. This is the big brain play out of Widowmaker. She assassinates him, they build a statue, and now she has a perch in Lovely King's Row as Lucky Future just roll through the point. The May sort of melted there a little bit a lucky future and managed to at least take first point so that's always good news that they're able to sort of push on ahead now moss 7 need to sort of stop this payload as this is where they struggled last time they waited until sort of midway through third point before they could stop the full momentum and this stagger that's coming through from moss 7 is that get, basically getting a diva demect is that the best way to start this yeah, it's, it just feels like they have their fishing hat on at the moment. So what is just throwing the halts in and name well, they are just pulling out all these beautiful fresh fish for themselves at the moment. Yag again continues to be a terror on this Hanzo. Hanzo has been so definitive here on this map so far. Only with a good angle though does start to get a couple of good shots into that Arisa. There goes the Dragon Strike as well, just will get rid of Jinmu. Blizzard, very pivotal here on this point, but Jinmu's just been so quiet on this May. He hasn't managed to set up an ultimate just yet. And Yag and um, Lee just continue to push forward with this double sniper. Comp. They're taking such good position here. On and over time is set so this payload is still moving moss 7 now have a perfect opportunity to stop this and they have good ultimates to do it bear in mind they're building up their support ultimates ready lucky future used their only one hollow key and is also selling mercy in on this attack remember so having the transcendence to protect the team but most importantly that may ult is working its way up the dragon strike is ready this is the perfect opportunity for moss 7 to take this fight Dragon Strike does go through. Might have been, you know, I think it did go through there. We've just not seen the results of it as we do see Mask having a bit of a duel with the Widowmaker. May Blizzard does come out though, does get the wall up. Can she get the freeze onto anyone? Can anybody be made to chill out? Looks like Gary's actually stuck here on the side. <laughs> just like, oh, please let me out the subway. Oh god, it's it's chaos in here. It's just it's a mess. But it looks like Moss 7 pulled the way back. The May actually managed to clear enough space. The kill's coming through in their favor. Mask managing to spring it back. Tanks clearing the way. May setting everyone up and smashing those statues down. They finish it just at the end of set. I think Gary lost his oyster card. That's why he couldn't get out of the subway. <laughs> he was just sort of stuck there. But that was exactly what you'd hope for Moss 7, really, that they were like, OK, it's in overtime. We've got picked. We lost that fight pretty badly. But we do have big ultimates coming through. They used a very aggressive uh, transcendence. And they waited for the mail, actually, when TN self-destructed. As we get back into mech, that's exactly when Jin moved through down just to make sure it wasn't eaten. Because if it was eaten, that fight would have looked very, very different. So now Moss 7 are using their big brain plays because they love to change up team compositions. Now they're starting to actually get results with what they wanted to do. You see in the May and they're going, that makes sense. But they're not only uh, showing off what they want to do with strategies, they're also actually being able to make them work, which is something that we haven't really seen from Moss 7 Club. They like to switch up their compositions, but in their own head is something that I've heard used for them time and time again. Now they look fully composed and looking future, even pulling out the wildcard picks from Overwatch League, have no real more answers, I don't think.
Yeah, like, I must just uh, sort of highlight with Moss 7 Club, like, it worked so well for them on the first assault with King's Row, this Super Shimada Brothers comp, that they're just going to run it again, right? It's Moss 7 Club, it must feel so good at the moment, because their first push through first and second was so decisive and so quick, so we'll see if they can remake that magic. Is Lucky Future just swapped up. Lucky Future, yeah, exactly, that's what I was going to say, is that they're not running that sort of Overwatch League comp. It needs a new name, the Solar Support Roadhog Triple Tank, but it's a bit of a mouthful. Uh, but Jinmu is very aggressive, sort of sees the lineup and quite rightly decides to sort of jump out a second because Lucky Future are going to sort of hold fairly far back and fight at range. That's their whole plan. But they don't want to give up too much space to Lucky Future. And as you see, Jinmu's looking for a round oh. through. Actually does get picked up from Yag. This is exactly where Lucky Future are going to go. Very aggressive. Now Moss 7 Club are sort of in a bit of an iffy spot right now. Yeah, they're just sort of rotating around the point over and over again. It's a bit of a magic roundabout situation as they just keep spinning around. But it looks like Lucky Future have actually landed exactly where they need to. Shana in high charge as well. Yug landing those arrows and just managing to find the kills. You can see that Jinmu's been relatively quiet. Only 50% of his blade built up so far while Lucky Future managing to sort of eke out an advantage at the moment. Moss 7 Club just trying to get their way back in again. Just looking for some sort of position here. Just landing some of these arrows would be such a big deal. That Dragon Strike so vital here for this point so mask trying to set up once more but only doing a good job just pressuring out mask has been a big problem so far and looks like they want to get something done at the moment valkyrie comes out on the defense gary's gone down as well so a lot of support power being lost yan actually on the back foot as well he's on high charge but he can't just push his way back in this mask is doing such a good job he gets the kill as well before the res comes through he has a dragon strike if they want to try and retake but i don't think they do that was a very aggressive play from Lucky Future that may not have paid off, bringing out the Valkyrie to try and rest and then getting picked is a big loss for them. They still do have time to work with a minute, so they might be able to take quite an aggressive stance on this, and that's exactly what they're going to try and do. You can see Reinhardt, so what, is pushing up fairly aggressively, wants to build up an Earthshot, because that could be the turning point, as there's no, uh, there's no Reinhardt on Moss 7's side. Jinbu is, again, m maybe he has his Oyster card, so we'll have a lot more success than Gary. But he's going to be using the subway to try and go to flank and put Holokian under a lot of pressure. Graviton is ready from TN2. Uh, there's just the transcendent straight away. There's no pressure put uh, onto that at all. So Jimmoon just doesn't get results of it. That's a big kill, though. Sorry, Kian does end up going down. Xian looking for the perfect Graviton Surge. Manages to get a lot in there. They're getting a lot of damage done as well, but this primarizing Winston causing problems. Zoning out uh, coming from Mask as well. He just puts a Dragon Strike across. It pushes out the enemy team on the counter push. So Xian actually not getting the value he looked he was looking for on the back of that one. Mask continues to push his way forward. This is exactly what Moss 7 Club needed here to go 2-0 up in this series. They are starting to just roll it forward. They have good position here on the end of third. You see Lucky Future swapping up a bits and pieces here. Wanli on that tracer. They've got to get there. They've got to try and make it to the point, but they don't! Oh, Touch they can Oh no! Oh, chat, you know what to do. Just just say it. Just say it, chat. Go ahead. The tempo was... It could have been so good, but ultimately it is actually Moss 7 that take this one. Uh, in quite surprising fashion, I feel that Lucky 7 uh, seemed to bring out strategies look very strong in the beginning, but Moss 7, uh, instead of trying to do that strategy themselves, which you'd sort of assume that they may want to do, they were like, we'll just play what we're good at. We can work around this. And I think the inconsistent nature or the lack of knowledge in certain areas for uh, Lucky Future using the strategy kind of proved the dividends in this fight. Moss 7, once the wind is in their sails, they look terrific. They look so aggressive. They're very good at taking control of certain areas, using dragon strikes to zone out certain points. That's where they look the strongest. The Lucky Future right now are looking a bit on the ropes right now. And as is Scribe's prediction scores so far. Speaking of, we have a beautiful <laughs> desk arranged for you guys. So I'm going to throw it over to my good friend Kick Tripod. Please enlighten us on what's Ooh. happening because Moss 7, they're agents of chaos. Oh man, that was so good. Oh, poor Scribe, man. You just can't get away from it. Thanks so much, one amongst many. Uh, first of all, Twitch chat, I'm proud of you. Only two C9s there. So, uh, that's, a, that's good, really good. That, that's actually a pretty solid way to uh, control yourselves. Show that self control. I'm proud. Let's talk about these uh, first matches. Uh, <laughs> hey, Scribe, you look, you look just disappointed. 
I am. It, it, it's tough to say, but I mean, obviously, props to Moss Seven Club. They came out big here. Like Oasis, definitely, it looked like they started to kind of understand what their win conditions are or how they really want to prioritize. And that's something I really want to touch upon. Moss Seven Club, despite what they're running, have a very clear understanding of how to win. When they're playing that Brigitte comp, they were very like, defensive. They weren't really putting her in any vulnerable line of sights. They were challenging tanks when they were jumping in, and they were abusing the fact that so what just didn't look comfortable. And, and, uh, in dive composition. He just didn't look like he knew what he was doing. He was often has a lot of empty space, sitting around trying to figure out what his next move was. And that's not what you want with a dive tank. You have to be more proactive than that. But, I mean, Mask, though, has just been insane. He's hey. gone off. So I wanted to, get, Kenobi, I wanted to ask you, and I think uh, uh, Scrab kind of already touched on it, but who are the standout performances right now, and why is Mask on the top of that list? Because, um, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Mask has just been kind of insane. Yeah, Mask is doing a great job. And I think something, you know, to talk about with this, what I've seen so far, you know, especially on King's Row, what I was seeing is it's kind of like we have this duel between, you know, Mask and Yarg, right? Two of these really, really great, you know, Hanzo players. It was, you know, well, Yarg was popping off and then Mask was popping off later. But what I'm really seeing is it's kind of a battle of who has the better you know, Batman, who has the better Robin to their Batman, right? So it's currently, you know, it's Wan Lee is on for Lucky Future is the Robin for Yarg. And then for Moss 7, it's Jinmu. And Jinmu has had a much better game so far than Wan Lee has. And if you're, you know, Jin 